Good morning, beloved in Jesus Christ. Welcome to Reform Church Jobek Worship Service. Today is Sunday, Sunday of 24 May 2020. Myself, Pastor T. Rabali, leading you in today's worship service. I hope that you are well and that you are with God, trusting in God wherever you are and also even in this situation <coughs> where we are in lockdown level 4. Uh, even though we're in lockdown, we don't fail to worship God. We remember God is King, He is Lord. Beloved, let us come to this worship service. Let us come before the Lord. Let our hearts and minds prepare, be prepared to worship and meet God and be blessed by him even in this worship service. Let us seek God's blessing. We lift our eyes upward and we ask ourselves where will our help come from? Our help comes from Jehovah, the Lord God, creator of heaven, earth and all that exists. Beloved, may the grace of our Lord Jesus and the love of God be with you through the working of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us praise God by singing the song from Nimbo Zabate in the number 132, the song which says, Hey Imberani, Morena Inuinote, sing to the Lord, all of you. It is good to sing to the Lord. Let's sing indeed that song. Today we say Muli Biana. That means how are you in Chichewa or Chinyanja? Chichewa or Chinyanja is a language spoken in Malawi in Africa. So today, as I said, in line with May being the month of Africa where we remember the founding, the starting of the organization of African unity, uh, which started in May 1963. So we will confess or recite the Apostles' Creed in Chichewa, reminding, being reminded that Jesus is Lord and Savior even in Africa. And as I said, the Holy Spirit is giving us faith to confess and praise Jesus in our languages and even when we reach heaven we will be speaking these languages so when they greet they say hello Moni or Moni and how are you uh, it's Muli Bianji or good morning Mwazuka Bianji and then when you say I am well you say Ndili Bino so let us uh, say together the Apostles' Creed in the language of Chichewa or Chinyanja. And I will lead you in 
reciting the Apostles' Creed. It says, Di kulupirira mulungu atate wampamvu zonze. Wakulenga za umwamba ndiza panzi. Di kulupirira Yesu Kristu mwanawake wobadwa yeka. Ambuye watu. Amene ana pazidwa ndi mzimu uera. Na badwa ndi Maria na mwa liyo. Na sauzidwa kwa pontio piratu na mwa lira. Na ikidwa manda na tikira kwa akufa. Tiku lachitatu ana ukanzo kwa akufa. Na kwera kumwamba na kala pazanja la manja la mlungu atate wampamvu zonze kuchokera kumweko adzadza kudza weruza anthu amoyo ndi akufa ndikulupirira mzimu oyera ndikulupirira mpingo wopatulika wa Kristu wa kwa anthu onze chianjano cha oyera mtima kukulu lukidwa kwa machimu kukanzo kwa tupi Ndi moya wosata. Amen. Indeed, thank you, Jesus. Zikomo, eh, Jesu. When they say thank you, it's Zikomo. Eh, thank you very much, Jesus. Or Zikomo Kwambiri. Yesu. Eh, let us sing the following song, eh, which says, Come to Jesus. Uh, woza ku Jesu bwerani kwa Jesu come to Jesus uh, umfeli wako let us indeed come with our hearts God is calling us uh, to praise him to honor him uh, to worship him Beloved, indeed, let us continue and worship. We are called by God to worship. We are called to relationship with him, to his covenant. And even on this day of Sabbath, we are reminded that we are God's people. 
Jehovah is our God. He saved us, he redeemed us, and he calls us to obey him, to serve him, to believe in him. And today, let us read together God's law, the summary, in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 22. We will read from verse 34 to verse 40. That is Matthew, chapter 22, from verse 34 to verse 40. In the English Standard Version that I'm using, it reads as follows. But when the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. And one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? And Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Amen. Let us respond to the reading of God's law, being assured that we are pardoned of our sins because of Jesus Christ. We are loved by God, and because he loves us, then we also love him. Let us sing the song in English, God loves me dearly, grants me salvation. God loves me dearly, he loves even me. Beloved, let us come to prayer. We will pray. I will lead you in prayer. O Jehovah, our God, you who is the only true and living God, we thank you that you are our God, our Father, our Savior, our Provider. You are our everything. Without you, we can't do anything. Everything exists and moves because of your power, because you allow it, because of your wisdom. Indeed, Jehovah, you are most high. You are everywhere. You are almighty. You have all the power. Your name is above all names. We bow down. We come with humble hearts, knowing that we are sinners, we are creatures, we are born and we die. O oh God, you are eternal, you are righteous and perfect. We come trusting in your mercy and grace, trusting in the name of Jesus Christ. O oh, hear us, accept our worship and prayer, accept us in your presence. We thank you for this day. We thank you for the past days and nights that you have protected us. You have provided for us everything we have, everything we have achieved. We thank you for the strength and the intelligence to can work. We thank you for our health, even those who are sick. We pray, O oh God, that 
you heal us and help us to praise you and to trust you even in times of sickness. We pray to you knowing that you are the provider. Jehovah Jireh. You provide for everything that we need in our bodies and for our spirits and minds. Without you, without your help, life cannot continue. And that is why we pray, O oh God, even when we have questions about the economy, the future of employment and business in our country, but we know you will always remain, you always be there, and you know the future already. You have us in your hands. You always watch over us. And that is why we pray trusting in you. Oh God, help us. Help us overcome fear, anxiety and worry. Help us to work, to trust in you as the one who lead us. Even when we don't know how the future looks like. Oh Jehovah, help us to hear your word. To know it, to understand it. And to apply it in our lives all areas of our lives, all situations that we encounter. You are the one who call us to know you, to believe you, to serve you. Lead us. Give us wisdom to can do the right thing, to choose what is right in every situation. Help us, O oh God, to overcome temptation. Help us to proclaim and praise your name wherever we are. Your word is light, is the lamp. May it guide us in our lives, in our relationships, in our work. Help us, O oh God, to love others. Teach us to love. Change our hearts to be kind, to be merciful, and to love others. Help us to forgive those who have done wrong against us, as you have also forgiven us. O oh God, Jehovah, we pray that as we come to the reading of your word, you open our minds and hearts to understand, to see you. We pray knowing that the Holy Spirit, he works in our hearts. Make them soft, make them to receive you. Make them to receive your word. Help us wherever we are. In our homes, when we go to our workplaces, even in this time in South Africa, where we are at lockdown level 4. Indeed, the coronavirus situation has affected our lives. It even affects and brings changes to the way we even worship you. But you know this. You knew it before it came. And you know how it will end. And you also call us to trust in you, to serve you, even in these different and strange times. Lead us, O oh God. Lead our leaders in government. Lead our leaders in the churches that we find ways and we continue to serve your kingdom, to preach your word, even in this new normal, even in this new situation. But it is not new to you, Jehovah. Although it is new to us, that's why we pray, trusting that you can guide us. Help us, O oh God, as we continue to cry to you regarding this novel COVID-19. Help our doctors and nurses to take care of the sick. When we fall sick, we pray, O oh God, that you heal us. We also know that these bodies are temporary. You might call us to you even in that situation, we trust in you. We look forward to meeting you where our faith will be sight. We will see what we were hoping for. We pray, O oh God, that you be with us, not only South Africa, but all over the world. Governments work together and cooperate in fighting not just against the coronavirus, but also terrorism, protecting the environment, and also in economic development. Oh God, protect us. We cry about crime. 
and violence. Many are crying in their homes, even on the streets, because of violence. Protect us, O oh God. We pray for our police, our security people, our courts. Give them to be bold, to do what is right, to fight against what is wrong. Help us as South Africans to love each other, to respect life, and to respect one another's possessions and dignity. We ask all this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Beloved brothers and sisters, we come to the reading of the Word of God. As you know, as we started in the beginning of May, with the section of Second Kings, chapter 1 to 8, talking about the Word of God which is present. It is present everywhere. It is present every time, all the time. The Word of God is present for you to know God and to see God working in your life and also around you. So today, we continue in Second Kings chapter 5 second kings chapter 5 and we will be reading from verse 1 to 27 that whole chapter of second kings amakosi wesibili isa hluko sehlanu sifunde leyo chapter yonke rikobala dzikosi dza bubili ndima ya butano rikobala verse dzothe dza leyo ndima i will lead you in reading using the english standard version which i have before me you will listen and follow in the Bibles that you use. It reads as follows. Naaman, commander of the army of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master and in high favor, because by him the Lord had given victory to Syria. He was a mighty man of valor, but he was a leper. Now the Syrians, on one of their raids, had carried off a little girl, from the land of Israel and she worked in the service of Naaman's wife. She said to her mistress, Would that my Lord were with the prophet who is in Samaria. He would cure him of his leprosy. So Naaman went in and told his Lord, Thus and so spoke the girl from the land of Israel. And the king of Syria said, Go now, and I will send a letter to the king of Israel. So he went, taking with him ten talents of silver, six thousand shekels of gold, and ten changes of clothing. And he brought the letter to the king of Israel, which read, When this letter reaches you, know that I have sent to you Naaman, my servant, that you may cure him of his leprosy. And when the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his clothes and said, Am I God to kill and to make alive that this man sends word to me to cure a man of his leprosy? Only consider and see how he is seeking a quarrel with me. But when Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his clothes, he sent to the king, saying, why have you torn your clothes? Let him come now to me, that he may know that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman went, came with his horses and chariots and stood at the door of Elisha's house. And Elisha sent a messenger to him, saying, Go and wash in the Jordan seven times, and your flesh shall be restored and you shall be clean. But Naaman was angry and went away, saying, Behold, I thought that he would surely come out to me and stand and call upon the name of the Lord his God and wave his hand over the place and cure the, le the leper. Are not Abana and Papa, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in rage. But his servants came to him and said to him, My father, 
It is a great word the prophet has spoken to you. Will you not do it? Has he actually said to you, wash and be clean? So he went down and dipped himself seven times in the Jordan, according to the word of the man of God. And his flesh was restored like the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. Then he returned to the man of God, he and all his company, and he came and stood before him. And he said, Behold, I know that there is no God in all the earth but in Israel. So accept now a present from your servant. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives before whom I stand, I will receive none. And he urged him to take it, but Elisha refused. Then Naaman said, If not, please let there be given to your servant two mules load of earth. For from now on, your servant will not offer burnt offering or sacrifice to any god but the Lord. In this matter, may the Lord pardon your servant. When my master goes into the house of Rimon to worship there, leaning on my arm, and I bow myself in the house of Rimon, when I bow myself in the house of Rimon, the Lord pardon your servant in this matter. Elisha said to him, Go in peace. But when Naaman had gone from him a short distance, Gehazi, the servant of Elisha, the man of God, said, See, my master has spared Naaman, the Syrian, in not accepting from his hand what he brought. As the Lord lives, I will run after him and get something from him. So Gehazi followed Naaman. And when Naaman saw someone running after him, he got down from the chariot to meet him and said, Is all well? And he said, Gehazi, all is well, my master has sent me to say, There have just now come to me from the hill country of Ephraim two young men of the sons of the prophets. Please give them a talent of silver and two changes of clothing. And Naaman said, Be pleased to accept two talents. And he urged him and tied up two talents of silver in two bags, with two changes of clothing, and laid them on two of his servants. And they carried them before Gehazi. And when he came to the hill, he took them from their hand and put them in the house. And he sent the men away. And they departed. Gehazi went in and stood before his master. And Elisha said to him, where have you been, Gehazi? And Gehazi said, Your servant went nowhere. But Elisha said to him, Did not my heart go when the man turned from his chariot to meet you? Was it a time to accept money and garments, olive orchards and vineyards, sheep and oxen, male servants and female servants? Therefore the leprosy of Naaman shall cling to you and to your descendants forever. So Gehazi went out from his presence, a leper like snow. Let the church say, Amen. That is the word of God, beloved, that we are looking at today, that God wants to speak to us uh, today. And having read here in Second Kings chapter 5, let us focus on verse 15. Verse 15 it says, Then Naaman returned to the man of God, he and all his company, and he came and stood before him. And he said, Behold, I know that there is no God in all the earth but in Israel. So accept now a present from your servant. Those words which Naaman confessed, he says, I know that there is no other God except Jehovah. He is the God in all the earth. By reading with you that passage, I want us to be reminded of the knowledge and belief that Jehovah is the only God in all the earth. Ngobara na wishi chipida no dobolo la heferesi ya 15. Nikoto doro umbure no kwati iswa kawo diva uri Jehovah ndi ene mudzimu lipasi ni loti. Ndi ene mudzimu ya ete. Aunamu mudzimu ononga ene. 
Yehova ndiye ni mzimu arelipasi ni lote bakiti ngokufunda nani lana ku chapter 2 nokuphinda futhi leo verse 15 ngifuna ukuthi sikhumbu le nokuqiniswa ukuthi u Jehova uye uNkulunkulu kuphela ezweni uye ofanelwe ngokubizwa ukuthi uNkulunkulu akekho omunye onje ngaye akekho omunye ofanelwe ngokubizwa uNkulunkulu ngaphandle kuka Jehova and that is what we see naman coming to to know to believe that Jehovah the God who revealed himself through Elisha the God in Israel Jehovah is God in all the earth there is no other except him when we read this we must ask ourselves even when we read the bible why do we read the bible what is the purpose of the bible stories what is the purpose of writing the bible and telling us many things here in the bible even in church or preaching done by pastors what is the purpose and the goal of that of the bible and the preaching is that we must make known we must make known that jehovah is the only god in all the earth and that is what is achieved here in second kings chapter 5 when naman who was not an israelite by the way he comes to know to believe and to confess that Jehovah is the only God in all the earth. And that goal of making Jehovah to be known that he is God in all the earth, that goal is very important. Because if we know that goal, that purpose, then we will be able to understand the Bible, the redemption history, the salvation history, where God works from Genesis to Revelation. He is revealing himself that there is no other God. Then we'll understand the purpose of the Bible because it was recorded with that purpose to show that Jehovah is the Lord, is the King, is the Savior. And when you understand that, you will use and understand the Bible the right way. But also when we understand this purpose that God wants us or God is working to make himself to be known that Jehovah is the only God, then as church, we will understand what we are called to do. Then we will work with God in the mission and objective that God wants to achieve. Then you will prioritize your goals and objectives even in your life as servants and disciples of Jesus to achieve this goal to make people to reveal all over the world that there is no other God except Jehovah. And this knowledge, to know this, like Naman, knowing that there is no other God in all the earth except Jehovah, to know this is very important. It is very important because this is what calls you to believe, to have faith, to have relationship with God, to be in covenant relationship with God, to be beneficiary of the blessings and promises of God. When you believe, when you know that Jehovah is God, there is no other one all over the world except him. It gives you eternal life. It gives you forgiveness of sins. And it is a knowledge not just for the head to know that Jehovah is God in all the earth. It transforms you, your identity, your thinking, your desires, your life is influenced by this knowledge, by this faith. And that's why when we read 2 Kings chapter 5, this history was also reminding Israel, even when they were in exile, what they were called to do as people of God. Not just to know God, but with that knowledge, they must live it out. They must confess it. 2 Kings chapter 5 was also a, a reminder to the kings to the prophets, to the preachers, that this is the calling, this is the objective. Jehovah must be known that he is God in all the earth. Beloved, let's look at that. This knowledge, this faith, this confession that Jehovah is God in all the earth. The first thing is that the Lord Jehovah, he directs the process that leads a person to come to the right knowledge, to come to the truth that Jehovah 
is God in all the earth. Chito chito chomo msiri chikuamba nga hingo, nga hindivo, nga hutanziera. Uri Yehovah ndiye ni mzimu lipasi ni lote. Udiba ezo zitu. Ndiftu vune mzimu ariswikisa kazo. Ndiye ni ane achimbi zandira ya uri mutu. Asuke kandivo yone, kango yone, kafuru pelo lone. Kinti okale sifane sibo nilana. Is that unkulu unkulu? Huyo osebenzayo. Ahola umundu. Ukuti sifige kule triniso. Sifige kule nkolo. Yokuti uje ova. Huyo unkulu unkulu. Emshabini. Ulizwe long. We say this even here. Because you must know that knowledge doesn't just come from you. Knowledge comes from something. Knowledge comes from somewhere. Whatever you know is because you acquired it. You got it from somewhere. For example, the language, English, Zulu, Sutu, Chivenda, Chitsonga. Whatever language, Chichewa, Igbo. How do we know language? We learn it. Whether you are talking of driving a car, cooking, baking, all those things we learn, all that knowledge we get from somewhere. Nobody's born with knowledge. And that is the same with knowing that Jehovah is God in all the earth. There is no other God like him. We learn. We get it. And God is the one who gives that knowledge. God is the one who directs us the process, the growth, so that we come to the right knowledge. Let's look here at Naman. How did he come to know and to confess that Jehovah is the only God in all the earth. How did God work in the life of Naaman? And you see, number one, how God works. He uses situations that happen in the life of a person. Muzimu shumi sa nyimere. Zineza verera uchuloni habu. Udizungurura no basukisa kango. Unkulungulu sebenzi sa izi imo ezenza gala impilwe ni yako. Uguti, wena ufike lapu. Ubona uvulega amesu. Uguti, how? Ngembele unkulungulu kono. Unkulunkulu Jehovah. Naaman was commander in the army of the king of Syria. He was a great man, as you see in verse 1. And God Jehovah is the one who even gave victory to Naaman and to the Syrians. God can bless people who don't even know him, who don't believe in him. God can give good things even to those who are not Israelites, who are not part of the church, who are not part of the covenant. God, he gave success, he gave progress, he gave victory to the Syrians. And even today, God gives rain, God gives wealth, God gives health to people who don't know him. He gives promotions, he makes people leaders, and they are high and famous. It is God. Even though you don't agree, or you don't acknowledge, or you deny it, but the truth is, is God giving you that. And through the successes, he's also talking. But also, God can give sickness. He can give situations of pain and suffering. Like in Naaman's case. Naaman was big. He was great. He was successful. But then he was diagnosed with leprosy. Leprosy was a name given to different kind of sicknesses. Different kind of sicknesses that affect the skin of a person. And when you are sick with leprosy, normally it brought shame. Now you must practice social distancing. It was there in the Old Testament, social distancing. Go and read Leviticus 13 to 15. In the people of Israel, when you were sick with leprosy, you must social distance, you must quarantine outside the camp or go outside others and you live in a separate place. Until you are healed. Now, Naaman is diagnosed with leprosy. Even though he's a great man. And imagine if in those days there was newspaper or there was social media sites. The headline. Commander Naaman sick with leprosy. Yo, it was big news. But it was bad news. He's sick. The diagnosis of leprosy, it led Naaman to seek healing. And in the end, to find healing from Jehovah, to find salvation from Jehovah, and to know that, oh, 
There is no other God except Jehovah. And this is a lesson that God is teaching us that no matter how big and rich and connected and medically insured or medically covered you are, there are situations like sickness that will come in your life. This is a lesson that no matter how powerful and mighty and under you, you have a lot of people that listen to you, that you control. But it can happen that situations happen beyond your control, that you can't control. You can't stop them coming. And those situations, the Lord is making people to be humble. Mudzimushume says on Yimele Uta or what did to Uitobe. To, to make you realize that you are not God. You don't have everything. You need help from outside yourself. You need salvation. You can't save yourself. Those kind of situations, they bring you down. They make you to be humble, to see that you are weak. You need help. You need salvation. And that's the same situation similar with what you read in 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. When you read 6 to 10. Paul, who was a great preacher, apostle, did a lot of things. God gave him visions which other people didn't know. Knowledge which other people didn't have. But then God gave him a thorn in the flesh, a pain in his life. And he prayed, God, take it away. But at the end, Paul accepted that no, God doesn't want to take this away. Even though he is weak, Paul, but he knows that God will make him strong. And that's why when you read in 1 Corinthians 12, he say, now I boast in God, not in myself. So it can happen that, yes, you have everything going your way and you think nothing will go wrong. And you even forget God. You think you are important. But then God brings situations that remind you. Not just sickness. Sometimes even sin, failure. Where you are shown that you failed to obey God. You failed to do everything that God wants that God commands. You are not perfect. And it shows you that you must be humble and seek salvation from outside. The other thing which God uses, apart from situations, is that God directs and works through relationships, connections with other people. God brings other people in your life. And that's what you see here. Naman God using the Israelite girl, the slave girl, who was captured and became a slave, a servant in the house of Naaman. And she was captured and she ended up there. But even that is part of God's plan. It's part of God waking. She didn't choose to be a slave. Obviously, nobody wants to be a slave. But God allowed it that she must be captured and she must end up in the house of Naaman, saving Naaman and his wife. And she was able to tell Naaman about the prophet in Israel. Imagine if she was not there. So it was God's plan. You must see God's wisdom here. And also God's wisdom for your life. The Lord who controls every situation, he also controls relationships. People who come into your life. People who some of them you didn't choose to know. But you were brought together. And it's so that as a believer, when you are connected with other people, when you are born in a family which you are born in, when you go to the school you are going to, when you go to the workplace you are going to, or you are living in the place where you are living, where you have a house where you are, you are staying, sometimes you didn't choose to, 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 to be there. Sometimes if you had chosen, maybe you want to be in America. Maybe you want to be in St. But no, God put you there and connected you with your neighbors, your colleagues, your fellows, people, pupils or learners. As a believer, it is so that you achieve the purpose of God. Bring people to the knowledge of God. And also, those who don't believe come to salvation. And that is what we must see here. We might desire something else, but God brings us something else, which is different from what we wanted. And that is what you see with the Israelite slave girl. She could have been frustrated and negative, complaining, and she doesn't help. But when she sees Naaman, 
and the sickness. She uses her knowledge. I know from where I come from, there is a prophet of God who can heal you. And she offered the solution. And that's what you see. It led Naaman to then go and ask, let me go to Israel. And it was this, this history, it was a lesson to Israel who, who, who were now in exile, maybe in Babylon. And they were servants. They, they were maybe some of them, they were even slaves to the Babylonians. That even in that country, even where you, where you are, you must work. God wants to use you. God has put you there. Even when you are in exile. So that you show that God is Jehovah. There is no other God in earth except Jehovah. In the Old Testament, we have the story of Joseph in Genesis chapter 37. He was sold by his brothers. He go to jail because the wife of his master falsely accused him of rape. He meets a baker and a wine taster in jail. And through that connection, he was able to come to be known by Pharaoh. And Joseph was used by God to save Egypt and to save the world from hunger. But imagine if he was not there. But you can't imagine that because God has a plan. He planned that Joseph, yes, must be a slave. He must go to jail. But through that, he saved the world. You can also talk of Daniel and his friends. Young men who were captured by the Babylonians. Of course, they had plans, they had dreams. But they were captured and taken to Babylon to serve in the government of Nebuchadnezzar. But when they were there, God gave them intelligence, God gave them the faith, and they show Nebuchadnezzar that there is no other God except Jehovah. Go and read Daniel chapter 4. Beloved, I know nobody wants to be a slave. No, no one wants to be a slave. All of us want to be kings, we want to be bosses. Yeah? We don't want to be the, the, the tail. All of us want to be the head. Agir. But sometimes God can make you the tail. Can put you in a position you don't like. Connect you with people you don't choose to be connected with. But there is a purpose. Understand that God has a plan where he works to lead people to knowledge through relationships. And that's what you see. God using the Israelite slave girl. The other thing which God uses for people to come to the right knowledge is when you seek answers, when you seek help, you are guided by the word of God. Mawe na ufuna impendulo, ufuna unedo. Unkulunkulu uya kuhola, uya kugaida ngilizu ilake. We see Naman being guided by the word of God, which is represented by the prophet of the Lord, who, who was Elisha. Because Naman went to the king of Syria, hey, I need to go to Israel. The king of Syria, he write a letter to the king of Israel. And what did the letter say? The letter says, this man, my servant, Naman, he's seeking help. He wants cure from leprosy. Please cure him. And the king of Israel said, How oh, wena? Am I God? I can't help you. But then Elisha, he heard that there was that kind of thing. He said, No, let him come to me. So that he knows that there is a prophet of God in Israel. Because so, sometimes you, you, you might be looking for a place. It's like when you're looking for a place, an address, and you get lost. You have to ask, where can I find this place, this address? And then you find advice. You find someone telling you, go here. You will find the right place. Even in life, we have questions. Even in life, we might need help. And we might wonder. Go places thinking, where can I get the right place? And yes, God uses situations. God brings you through situations. But not only those situations. You need interpretation. You need the word of God to guide you to him. God can even reveal himself through nature. 
through creation. But we need scripture. Scripture is the special revelation. It is the clear revelation of God, which helps us to understand what God is saying in creation, what God is saying in our lives, what God wants us to see and to know. Scripture is very important. And that's what we see with the work of Elisha, the prophet of God. It is the same in the New Testament when the wise men from the East, they come having been told that the Messiah, the promised Christ is born and they follow the star. They come to Jerusalem. They come to the place of Herod, King Herod, and they think, oh, this is the place for kings. Maybe the king is here. And they ask Herod, Herod, where is the king? Herod is amazed and all of Jerusalem, they are, they are surprised. Eh? You are saying the Messiah is born. But then the scribes, they open the book of Micah, prophet Micah chapter 5 verse 2, that the Messiah will be born in Bethlehem. And indeed, they now go to Bethlehem. We see that God is making it very clear that we need his word. We need people to explain his word. We need the Bible to can be able to understand ourselves, to understand our situations, to understand where we must go. We need the Bible to be able to know God, to be able to have relationship with God in our lives, to be able to know Jesus. There's no other way. You can't do it on your own. But we need this word of God. Go and read also Second Peter chapter 1, verse 19 to 21. It says the word of God is true. It is like a lamp, a light in the dark, 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 dark place. And you must pay attention to this light. Because when you follow this light, the Bible, it will lead you to the light. The morning star will rise in your heart. That's what the Bible is about. And that's what God uses. Let me come to the second thing. In 2 Kings chapter 5, when you talk of the knowledge and faith that Jehovah is God in all the earth, it is a knowledge that is based on a unique way that God works. God works in a unique way. God works in a different way from other gods. That's what makes us to see that this one, this Jehovah, is different. He is God. He is not like us. He is not like these other things on earth. Cha ubiri jina rafano lichipo na kazi kose za ubiri. Musari chamba ngandi ivo. Nga utanzi, nga utanzi ira, nga utenda uri hova. Ndiyene mzimu kalipazi lote. Juko vaka uri ndira ine ashuma nga ayo. Yopa mbana. Ndi ndira ketwa. Ndi ndira ya shpenche ira. Ndiyene mzimu ashuma no chiza nga ayo. Ndi ndira ine ya mangaza. Okunye sifane sukubwone lana. Masiti lelikini iso. Lengkole ukutu Jehova ungu nkulu nkulu. Kumshaba wongi. Ibuya ngukuti indlela ungu nkulu asebenza nga. Indlela emanga lisa. Indlela engwele. Indlela eketekileyo. Aifani nabanya ungu nkulu. Aifani nezi nye indlela. Hiyo ndo enzi ukuti no namani. Abo nukuti hau. Hinge mpela lo u Jehova. Lo wase Israel. Hai usukile man. Huye nge mpela ungu nkulu. And you see naman. Naman knew about other gods. He knew. He came from Syria. And you find there is a God named Rimon. You can go and pray to Rimon. In uh, Philistines, they, they had a God called Baal. And there was Chemosh of the Moab. Those were called gods. But he's saying, Hi, now I see. Wo Chemoshi, wo Bali, Bani Bani, all those gods, they are not gods. There is one God, one Lord. And his name is Jehovah. Those gods and religions, they have temples, they have priests and prophets, and they have their own services and ceremonies. And even today, when you talk of all religions, even the atheists, the people who say there is no God, they, it is also a religion. It's what they believe. It's a religion as well. All those religions, they want to give, number one, explanation about where does life come from? Where does people, where do people come from? Origin. The other thing that religions try to do, they promise solution to the problems faced by mankind. Problem of sickness, problem of poverty, problem of sin, even the problem of death. And all religions, even today, they offer or promise salvation. If you follow this way, if you do this, 
you will be saved, you will be blessed. But then, what is it that makes the faith and religion of Jehovah to be apart, to be special, to be the best from all religions and faiths? What is it that makes Naman to believe and confess that even though there are other gods and other so-called religions, but this one Jehovah of Israel, the Jehovah of Elisha, the Jehovah of the Bible, he is the real God. Whereas the other gods, he says, he is the God in all the earth. How, how did he come to know that? How did he see that? It's because Jehovah, the way he work, the way he save is different. It's unique. It's special. And that is what even today when we say we are people of God, when you realize how did I come to be saved? How did I come into relationship with Jehovah? Hey. Yeah. You praise Jehovah. You say, hi, there's no one like him. Now, let, let, let's look at Naman here. There are a few things which will see how God works. Number one, the Lord Jehovah, he gives clear revelation and direction regarding the truth that he is a savior. The Lord's revelation is not a maybe. Maybe it will happen. Just try it. You will see. It's not that. Experiment. It's not about trying out. God, the Jehovah revelation, the faith is true. Jehovah is the Savior. Look at verse 8. Elisha is not afraid to say, come, God will save you. He even sends the servants to meet Naaman and say, Naaman, go and wash in Jordan. You will be clean. You will be healed. He's not saying maybe. It's because Jehovah is true. And his knowledge is certain. His promises are true. And that's what you see. All these statements are confident and bold and clear that Jehovah exists and he saves. And that is why when you read in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 15 to 22, Paul, he says, in Jesus Christ, there's no today, yes, and tomorrow, no, or maybe. In Jesus, the promises of God are yes. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 13 to 20, it says God has promised for sure because God is faithful. And in Jesus Christ, he's saying there is eternal life. It's not a maybe. In Jesus, there is forgiveness of sins. There is salvation. And that's what you see even in the Old Testament, this history. It was telling the people that Jehovah is there. Jehovah can save. And they didn't have an excuse to go to other gods because maybe it's, it's like uh, you, you, you wanted to go and buy chicken lichen and you find chicken lichen is closed. Now you have to go and buy KFC. With Jehovah, it's not like that. You, you can't say, ah, Jehovah can't save. That's why I went to Baal. That's why I went to Kemosh. Mm -mm. The Israelites didn't have an excuse to go to other gods. That's what this history was showing. Not just here, but even in the whole Old Testament. And that's why Jesus in Luke chapter 4, verse 16 to 30. Luke chapter 4, when he come to preach at Nazareth, his hometown, he tell them that the promise of Isaiah, that God will give healing, will give freedom, that promise has come in Jesus. But what did the people of Nazareth say? Ah, oh, they say, when well, Jesus, we know you. Your father is a Joseph, he, he, he is a carpenter. You can't come and tell us about you are the Messiah. And then Jesus, what did he say? When you read in Luke chapter 4, verse 27, you say, ah, what you are doing is the same with what happened in the Old Testament. How many people were sick with leprosy? But this one, Naaman, was saved. It's because he was saying, God saves. But you reject the truth. You ignore the truth of God. And you think God can save. It's not true. You can't say it's not true. God can save. The second thing, the way God works, what makes him unique? He saves because of his grace, not because of what people do for him. And that's one of the big things that 
differentiate or make Christianity special and unique from other religions. Naaman came here with great treasure, a lot of money, a lot of uh, uh, things, it, it, coming to get help from the prophet. It was the way other religions worked, where you have to give expensive things to the priests, and then they will pray for you. And the more expensive you give, yes, the more the God will listen to you. The more blessings you will get, the more impressed the God which you are praying to will be because of what you are doing for that God. But with Jehovah, no, it's not like that. And that is what Elisha shows here. He doesn't ask for money. Even after he has helped Naaman, he doesn't take the gift from Naaman. Why? He wanted to show that it's by grace. Mahala. Naaman didn't pay anything. Because it comes from God. It's a gift. It's grace. Undeserved favor. He didn't deserve it. But Naaman, he came there thinking that he's great, he's big. Because I'm a commander. Hey, you must come and meet me. I'm a commander. Hey, you must give me attention. You must save me. You must help me. Eh? Agree? That's what people with money, we think uh, we must not stand in the line. I, I come and I enter. Hey, I'm a big person. So I must not wait like other people. That's, what, that's the kind of attitude that you find with Naaman. Because he was angry. How, 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 how come this guy doesn't come and meet me? He just sends his servant. I'm a big man, man. But Elisha was showing, no, you are nothing before God. You have nothing to impress God with. You can't bribe God. You can't buy God. go buy God, he does favor out of his choice. Out of grace. And that's what Elisha was showing. And many people don't like this teaching of grace. Because it is humbling. You, you, you want to be praised. You want to be told, yeah, you did something. You achieved. That's good. And we praise you. No, but with God, you can't save yourself. You can't forgive yourself. You can't make yourself righteous. You can't make God to hear your prayer. You can't get eternal life by yourself. It is a gift that God gives. It is through Jesus Christ. Go and read again Ephesians by Ephesa. Chapter 2, verse 8 to 10. It is by grace that we have been saved. It is not by our own works. It is not because of who you are, what you have, what you have done, what you can give God. No, that is not nothing to God. But it is grace and love of God. First John chapter 4, verse 19. He loved us first. That's why we love him. It's not because we loved him and then God loves you because you love him. Hi, Connor. God, you can't control him with your gifts. They are nothing. God works by grace. It's not like other gods. Other gods, you have to slaughter goats before they listen to you. Jehovah has done everything in Jesus. Jesus has paid. God the Son, he became man. He paid, he became the sacrifice for our sins. And he, his death, is the one that makes God to listen to you, not what you do. The third thing, which makes God unique, Jehovah to be the God in all the earth is unique is that he gives salvation and blessings and you receive them by faith. Faith. Chitu cha kuraro chine mudzima shumanga kacho cha itori amangadze yehova abe ofanurongo fi mudzimu lipasi ni lothe au nononga ene. Ndi uri achiva shudufadza, achiva chidza wone batangane zanga chilizi pezi. Nga nga rutendo, sorry. Nga rutendo pezi. Full fed up it. Interest hat unkulungula seven zanga ends a kuti amanga lis anga fine na banya unkulungul. Ma abusi sa masindis. Wena wamkela ngu kola. Ngu kukola. Many times it is hard or it is expensive to get some things which you need. For example, even health. You find that you can't afford treatment and you are poor. And if you can't afford I it's difficult. That's the world you find us living today. But Jehovah with salvation, you can, it can be achieved by anyone, any person, whatever economic status. Whether you are poor, you are uneducated, you have nothing. You can be a child of God. You can inherit eternal life. You can be forgiven. Your prayers can be heard. God can hear you. And that's what it is shown here. 
Naaman was given a simple way of salvation. Very simple. Very sometimes even foolish. Go and wash. Go and dip yourself in the river Jordan. Seven times. All he had to do was to believe. And go and do it. Simple. But Naaman, he was angry. And he doubted that, ah, this thing can't work, man. This Elisha, ah, Elisha, oh, oh, I, I, where I come from, there are even better rivers. Bigger rivers than this small Anyana Jordan of yours. Why are you sending me to Jordan? Why are you sending me there? I could wash in other rivers. But God was showing that his way, even though it's simple and foolish to you, it works. And that's what you see. Naaman doing what he was told. He believed. His, his servants, they help him to believe. Master, don't do difficult things. The, 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 the prophet said you must do a simple thing. A simple thing. Just go to the river and wash. If, if maybe I told you to do a difficult thing, yes, you would have wanted to do it. But God's way, Jehovah's way is simple. Simple. Believe. And follow what he's saying you must do. Trust in Jesus. And that's what 1 Corinthians chapter 1 says from verse 18 to 30. Because other people, when they are told that it is in the death of Jesus that we are saved, that we are forgiven, that you are given the wisdom of God, the power of God, the life of God, it is only in the death of Jesus. How? Death? Jesus? Ha. Ha, ya, ya, ya. And others want big things. They want miracles. They want uh, clever philosophies. No, simple thing. Believe in Jesus and you'll be saved. Go and read Acts chapter 16. When the jailer in Philippi, he asked Paul and Silas, what must I do to be saved? He was given a simple answer. Believe in Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Believe that Jesus has done everything for you. He has obeyed the word of God for you. And because of him, you get the righteousness of God. His death is what God accepts as payment for our sins. He rose from the dead and is in heaven ruling and he will come to judge the living and the dead. That Jesus is the one that you must believe. Accept that only. That's the simple message of the Bible. But that is unique and it is special. You won't find this kind of message in other religions where our God, he works for us. Other gods, you have to work for them. To impress them. But here, God, the Son, he left heaven to come and be like us. To suffer for us. To die for us. To give us the blessings of God. And all we have to do is receive. Repent. Believe. Simple. But we want the hard things. We want the expensive things. We don't like simple things again. Sometimes... Just reading the Bible. Ah, it won't work. I, I, I want something special. I want miracles. I want hey, some things that show power of God. No, God works in a simple way. And you must accept. You must believe. Even as church, when we are said, go and preach the word of God. Work through baptism and holy communion. Those are things given by God. Sometimes we look at them and say, ah, these things. But that's how God says they work. But the other thing, when you say God is working, and it's making to be known as a special God, Jehovah. There's no other God like him on in the whole earth. He gives perfect healing and salvation that we need as people. Enye ntuma city u Jehovah uye unkulunkulu oyedwa lapha emhlabeni ofanelwe ngokubizwa unkulunkulu lapha emhlabeni is because uku sindisa kwakhe nokuphilisa kwakhe ukunika ngendlela ephelele complete healing naman in the end verse 15 or verse 14 he accept the encouragement of his servants and he did as Elisha told him he washed seven times and he was healed he was restored and his flesh was like that of a little child and was clean the truth is that Jehovah does not only heal Nyana, but he heals totally. That's the message we must hear, must hear from this verse. The, the healing of Naaman is not just about body, physical healing, but it is about making clean. That's why you see making clean 
clean, clean. Because it is not just about making clean in front of the eyes of people, but it is about being clean in front of God, the creator. That's the great healing and cleansing that we need. The healing of Naman also affected his mind and spirit. Now you find him confessing. Now you find him speaking the truth. Because our greatest sickness is not on the outside. It's in the inside. The heart, the mind, the spirit must be cleansed. Naaman was made new. That's why it says, like a little child. It was not just about the physical flesh. But it was him like being born again. Having new life. Coming out as a new person. And that is why when you, even when you read Leviticus 13 to 15, the commands that were given about leprosy and the sickness of leprosy, it was teaching people that there are things that separate you from God. There are things that uh, put you away from God. And those things you must be washed. They must be taken away. So that not only are you accepted by other people, but mostly you are accepted by God. And that is what God did when he gave us Jesus Christ. Go and read Hebrews 9, verse 12 to 14. It says that if the sacrifices of blood of the goats and the sheep and the cows, if it worked, then there will not be need of Jesus Christ. But Jesus Christ, the perfect sacrifice, he was needed. Why? Because he cleans our conscience. Utanzwa luvaro. Unkulunkulu usanjulula uvalo luaku. Ngapakati kwaku. Ukwenze kutu uwe muse. That's what God does. And he does that through the Holy Spirit. He does that through his word. He doesn't only change circumstances and situations, but he changed the heart and mind. In John 3, when Jesus was visited by Nicodemus, Jesus tell him, you can't get eternal life and see the kingdom of heaven if you are not washed by the spirit and the water. If you are not born again, because that's what we need. To be born again, to be changed from the inside. And for that to happen, it's God who can do that. Using the instruments, the spiritual instruments. Using the power, working the power of the Holy Spirit in us. To be born again, to be having life of God. But let me come to the last thing. Number three, when you talk of Second Kings chapter 5. What is the benefit and use of knowing that Jehovah is God in all the earth. And except Jehovah, there is no other God. The Jehovah is some information, you just know it for the sake of knowing it, but it doesn't bring any change. It doesn't bring any help. It doesn't, even if you didn't know something, it, it won't, you know. Uh, for, for example, if, if you were told there are 10,000 people sick with coronavirus, if you are sick, what does it change your, 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 your situation? If you know that there are other 10,000 people who are sick. Or, or if, if you say uh, Jeff Bezos, the owner of, of, of Amazon is, is the richest man in the world. What does this information do for you? Does it change your economic situation? For example, or, or you find uh, stats that say uh, Cristiano Ronaldo is the most followed person in Facebook and Instagram. Or Barack Obama is the most followed person in Twitter. So what? If I knew it, does it change anything? If I didn't know it, do I die? Eh? Agree? You find people saying uh, there is FOMO, F O M O, fear of missing out. Hey, I, I must know what is happening in the news. I must know what is happening on Facebook. Hey, th that information is, is very important. Really? If, if, if you were to close your Facebook or to close your TV for the whole week, will you die? What change will it bring? Actually, it might even give you peace, man. There is some information which is useless. But, my brother, my sister, my beloved in Jesus Christ. There is an information and knowledge which if you don't know it, hey, you are doomed. You are doomed. And if you know it, 
Wow! Your life will change greatly and eternally. And what is that knowledge? It is the knowledge that there is no other God on earth except Jehovah. There is no one like him. There is no one equal to him. That knowledge that Naaman also knew changed his life. And it can change your life. What is the use of that? The first thing, the knowledge that Jehovah is God in all the earth changes your identity and gives you direction in your life because now you know what you are living for, what you are saving and what you are worshipping. Chotoma, ndivo, ya uri ya hovande na mzimu lipasi niloti. Ia wa shanduki isaboni. Babu babu mtu wa mzimu. Uchilo habu. Babu babu uchilo wa mzimu. Babu diba zoro baku chile la mi. Zuneba foneta nuzipi hiyo. Inde okala, mawazi ukutu nkulu nkulu jehova. Uye nkulu nkulu, emflabi. Kuya kushincha wenu. Wazi ukutu, manje wenu ngumundu ka nkulu nkulu. Upile la nkulu nkulu, sebenze la yenu. Impilo yake, iya, uye. And that's what you see. Naman coming to know that there is no other God. And what is his response? I don't want to go to other gods anymore. I want to serve Jehovah. I want to give offering to Jehovah. That's why he even asked for the soil. He's saying maybe he wants to go and build an altar. Uh, 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 and, and, and pray to Jehovah. He doesn't want to give sacrifices to Rimon anymore. And that's what he came to when he realized that God loves him. God cares for him. God is almighty. He is the only savior. And he saved him by grace. He says, God, how can I save you? Let Elisha accept this. Elisha said, no, 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 no. Don't give me this. I'm continuing to tell you that God saved you by grace. And he even want to worship God. And that's what we must know. When we know what God has done. Who God is. Not just what God has done. But what God is for you. And what he gives you in Jesus Christ. That's what we must come to. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Verse 14 to 15. The love of Christ. Is what influences Paul. To do great things. To serve God. He's not saving God. So that he, he become loved by God. No. He is loved by God. Now he serves God who loves him. And that's what you and I must do. When we understand the love of God, the power of God, the plan of God, the way God works, we say, wow, how can you include us in this kind of thing? We are sinners. You have angels. But you call us to know you, to have relationship with you, to be your servants. And tomorrow there is eternal life. That is life-changing information, life-changing knowledge. The second thing, what you must do with the knowledge that God, Jehovah, is in all the earth. It must make you to develop a conscience, a God awareness, to be aware of God, in that he guides you in what is right and wrong. Chawubilimuzirichidivoriyehova, achi dibori ya hova uhone abu chila achi dede zwangazo kau ita zuru gao alicha zokakea enye nto masiazi kutu nkulu nkulu jehova uye nkulu nkulu lape mtlabi ageko umunye nkulu nkulu kwenza kutu siwe no valo uya shinja kutu manje si pile siyazi kutu nkulu nkulu ukona en maa kona kuyasu hola kutu siyazi kutu hino kulu ngile hino ukunga lungang sienze la ye na machi now man further explains to, to Elisha, hey, I have a situation, prophet Elisha. Uh, I will need forgiveness for this because uh, I might bow down to the God called ba Rimon because I'm a servant, I'm, a, I'm an assistant to the king. And when the king goes to his temple, the temple of the God called Rimon, and I will have to bow down and I might be forced to bow down. Now, some people will interpret this and say, no, Naman was talking about the past. He was asking forgiveness for the past things he used to do. But others say, no, this is not past tense. He's talking about future. And then others will say, how? It means that maybe Naaman didn't repent. How can he talk about saving Jehovah only? And then he says he's going to save Rimon. He must be strong. He must uh, refuse what the king tells him. That's what others say. That proves that he is a true believer. He has truly repented. But we must understand that Naaman uh, was a young believer here. And we must not judge him. 
And the Bible doesn't tell us what happened later. Whether Naaman faced that situation of going into the temple with the king and had to bow down to the god of uh, the the god of the Syrians and what happened. But what I want you to see is that Naaman, in raising up this issue, he has a conscience. Ono banalu varo. Umundu oazi kutu nkulu nkulu ukona. Enmanje ngifane ngienze, ngienze la nkulu nkulu. That is what you see in Naaman. He's having an awareness that Jehovah is the true God. Jehovah is the one I must bow down to. And he has a conscience. And that conscience is the one that makes him to judge. This is wrong. This is right. This I must not do. This I must do. This is what God wants. This is what God doesn't want. And this is the work of God in Naaman. To be able to raise an issue like this. Where the things he used to do. The wrong things he used to do. Now he feels pain about it. The wrong things others are doing. He sees that no this is not right. I'm saying that it's part of God. It's the work of God in Naaman. It's the knowledge of that Jehovah is God. The faith that Jehovah is God in all the earth. That makes Naaman to come up with something like this. And then Elisha what does he tell him? He says go in peace. Because God is the one in control. God is the one with you. The work that God has started in you, it is what God will continue. God will work in you. Even when you don't know the future. And you ask yourself, will I be a believer? Will I be able to do what is right? God will help you. That's what Jesus told the disciples in Matthew 10. You will be taken to court. The Holy Spirit will tell you, will help you to answer. You will go to all the nations. I will be with you. Go in peace. That's the message of Elisha. Some of us, we are looking forward. Will we have jobs? What if my husband, my wife dies? Will I still be a Christian? How will I live? What if I don't have a job? I don't have a business? What if I'm sick? The message is go in peace. When you know that Jehovah, God, is the Lord, God over all the earth, it gives you peace. The situations in the future, the circumstances, he won't give you what you can't handle. He can't give you situations that are beyond your ability. That's what 1 Corinthians 10 talks about. And that's what Elisha is saying. God will be with you even in that situation where you are forced maybe by the king to go into the temple of Rimon. God will be with you. God will guide you. And that's what happened even when Israel was in exile. People like Daniel, Abednego, Shadrach, Meshach. God was with them in Babylon, in a foreign country, when the king was giving commands against Jehovah. Who helped them? It was God. Even though they were young guys, young or youth, but they were able to navigate. They were able to decide. They were able to live out their faith. And that is the message when you know that Jehovah is God. On all the earth. The third thing. This knowledge that Jehovah is God in all the earth. Should make you to be honest and speak the truth. Because Jehovah knows and sees everything. Jehovah <laughs> Kufanele kwenze ukutu wena uwe ngumundu otembe gai, umundu wikini iso. Because unkulungulu ubona yonki indo, uwazi yonki indo. We are given here a story where the servant of, or, or the assistant of uh, Elisha, he, he is lying. And it is reminding us that God is everywhere. We can't lie to God. Because even, especially us as Christians, church members, we ignore and forget that our, our God is everywhere. He sees us. He sees what we are doing in our houses. He knows our bank accounts. He knows where we are going. He knows what we are doing on the internet. He sees us. He knows us. And when we know that, then we must be honest. We must be faithful. We must speak the truth. Look at Gehazi. He's disappointed that, ah, Elisha, this, this rich man, he go away. You don't even take anything. I go on. Then Gehazi ran after Naman. Naman. Uh, uh, Elisha is visited by some prophets. He needs some money. 
Give me some money. No man give him money. Gehazi come back. He hide. And then he come and stand in front of Elisha. But the man of God, he ask him, Gehazi, where are you coming from? Ah, master, ah, prophet, man of God, ah, you know, ah, no, I, was, I didn't go anywhere. I was just around the Enyan. Eh? Elisha, he tell him, did I not see you? Was my spirit not with you? Was not God with you when you were meeting Naman? Was God not with you? And that's what is the lesson to us, to the people of God, that this faith, this knowledge that God is everywhere, it must make us to be honest. Psalm 139, Pisalema 139, Ama Hubo 139, verse 7 to 12. You go to the skies, God is there. There is nowhere on earth where you go where the Spirit of God you can hide from God. Nowhere. Even if it's dark. Darkness to God is like light. It's like afternoon. God sees everything. He knows everything. John 4, verse 20 to 24. Jesus talked to the woman of Samaria. He says to her, God, Jehovah, is God of truth and spirit. He's not found in one place. He's not found in this mountain here. He's not found only in Jerusalem. He's not found in the church only. God is everywhere. He's God of his spirit, his truth. And he wants those who worship him to worship him in the truth and in the spirit. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 6 to 8. Take out the old living. Take out the old things of wickedness. And worship God in truth and sincerity. And this means that, yes, we must confess our sins. We must be honest, even about our weaknesses. Because sometimes you are asked, how are you? Mwali Bwanji, how are you? You say, ah, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. But you're not fine. You're not fine. Maybe you're afraid to tell people you're not fine. You have problem. You have weakness. But with God, be honest. Because that's how you'll be blessed. That's how you'll be saved. That's how you'll be helped. That's how you'll be healed. Be honest with God. He knows your heart. He knows your mind. He knows your situation. The last thing, when you say the knowledge of God, Jehovah, that he is God in all the earth, it must make you to be humble and accept the will or plan of God. Enye nto masithi uNkulunkulu sifanele simazi lolwazi leliciniso liya lulwasiza lusebenza ukuthi wena usithobe uwamkele uthando lo kaNkulunkulu uwamkele intando kaNkulunkulu ukuthi uNkulunkulu ufunane Elisha in verse 26 he make clear to Gehazi This is not the time to accept money and possessions It was not the time because it was not God's time However, Gehazi maybe was tired of working and uh, uh, he's not rich and now he wants to take his own way of getting rich because he wants honor. He's not satisfied about where he is. He's not happy where he is. He's frustrated. No man, I want to be rich now. God, I'm saving you now. I want to be rich now. And what does he do? He end up lying. 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 6, verse 6 to 10. The love of money is what makes people to do wicked things. Because you, you want money, you want comfort, you want favor from people, you want uh, to be respected by people. And that's why even Jesus in Luke chapter 18, he tells his disciples in Luke 18, verse 29 and 30, no one who left his houses and parents and everything for me will not get more in heaven. Jesus is talking of eternal riches, blessing, honor, glory. That's what we must focus on. Pleasing God. Doing the will of God. And God will lift us up in his own time. And God will lift us up with Jesus in heaven. That is the eternal riches we must be motivated by. But when we are motivated by money, here on earth then we number one we do for money we might even kill we might even steal we might even lie to get money 
But when we love money, we don't even give. We don't support the church. We don't support the poor because we love money. We don't do the will of God. And that's what Gehazi was doing. Himself, it's about himself. What I want, not what God wants. And that's why in verse 27, he was given the leprosy of Naaman. Because it was a punishment to humble him. Look at Naaman in the beginning. He's big, he's powerful, he's going up. God give him leprosy to humble him. Go and read in Numbers, Numeric, chapter 12, verse 10. Miriam, the older sister of Moses, she, she come complaining, Ah, Moses, you are younger than me. How come God speak to you only? God can speak to me as well. I must also be the leader. Actually, you, Moses, you married a foreign woman. How can God talk to you? And what did God do? He was angry with Miriam. Wamshaya. The leprosy. And she was sick. That's the leprosy punishment. Is to bring down when you are proud against God. He brings you down. Go and read also 2 Chronicles. 2 Chronicles chapter 26. Verse 16. There was a king called Uziah in Judah. 2 Chronicles 26. Uziah. He, he started very well. Listening to the word of God. Listening to the prophets. Doing the right thing. Changing things to, to, to be right. But later on he became proud. And when he became proud... He go into the temple where the priests were the one who were supposed to do the sacrifice. He say, no, I'm the king. I want to do everything. I want to control the, even the temple. What happened? The priest tell him, Uziah, don't do this. He says, don't tell me. I'm the king. And then when he was about to, to do the things, his hand was sick with leprosy. His whole body now becomes sick. He was now isolated. He was now no longer the king. And his child got into the, uh, the the position. It's because people didn't listen to God. They think nothing will happen. They think we can do anything and not repent and God won't do anything. This is a message again. The word of God is true. Even to the people who went to exile. That if you don't listen to God, not only will you be punished by God like this, you can be punished by exile. And you are isolated from God. You are isolated from the promised land. And we must not be afraid of social distance because of leprosy. This is small. Brothers and sisters, be aware that there is social distancing. There is quarantine in hell. Where you are isolated from God. Distant from heaven. You are in eternal fire. Oh, oh, oh. And that quarantine, there is no different levels, ne? like Ramaphosa quarantine, where you think uh, God will start from level 5 and come to 4 and come to 3 and come to 2 and come to 1 and lockdown is over. Uh -uh. That lockdown in hell is forever. My brother, my sister, repent now. Humble yourself. Accept the will of God that Jesus is King, is Lord, is the Savior for you. Don't be boss and think you will get away with it. Repent as Second Kings chapter 5 is telling us and accept like Naaman that Jehovah, he is the God in all the earth. Accept him. There's no other. I'm not the king. God, Jehovah, is the king. May God help us. Amen. Let us pray. Let us finish off by prayer. I will lead you uh, in prayer. <clears throat> oh Lord Jehovah, our God and Father, we thank you for the Bible, we thank you for your word, we thank you for Second Kings chapter 5. We thank you that you are God who talk, you are God who work, and you show the truth. We are blind, but you give us to see. We are sick, you give us healing. We are dirty, you give us to be clean. We thank you, Jesus Christ, for your perfect sacrifice. We thank you, O Holy Spirit, for transforming us, making us to be born again, to be new, to be restored. We thank you for the word which comforts, which teaches the truth. Help us to understand, help us to believe, help us to apply it. May your word, which indeed is powerful, may it work in all of us, helping us to do what is right, to apply in every situation the right thing. Help us to be honest, help us to be humble, to believe that your will and your timing is the right thing. Sometimes we are distracted by what is happening in the world, by different problems, 
and we are afraid and we think we can get help from other gods. Sometimes we are faced with challenges and we think you can't help us, oh God, forgive us. Sometimes we listen and see other religions and other lifestyles against the word of God and we think that is good, oh God, forgive us for being attracted to the wrong things, to the wrong teachings. Many times, oh God, we are afraid to speak the truth. We forget you. We forget that you are all over the world. Oh God, forgive us for doubting you, for disrespecting you. And today we say, oh Jehovah, there is no one like you. You are the only God. You are God in all the earth. Amen. Beloved, let us sing uh, the song which we used to sing. We used to sing it a long time ago, uh, especially in the youth choirs. Seeking the lost, yes, kindly entreating. Let us sing that song as we reflect on the message that we heard from Second Kings. Beloved, uh, it's still the month of May. Uh, as we started the month of May, talking about Heidelberg Theological School, let us remember that ministry, that work, and let's pray for it. And if we have something, let us continue to contribute. As also Sundays, we uh, supposed to collect for alms for the poor in worship of God, so that God continue to show His love and mercy 
through what we do for him or through what we give so that it can be used for for for, for his kingdom so let us also do that remember that and uh, if we need let us contact our elders and deacons in our worship uh, centers this is a, a new way people are talking of the new normal uh, things are different even funerals are different uh, even weddings are different uh, in Jobeg we also have a member who is supposed to be married on 7 June uh, we will talk about it next week but it's going on on the 7th of June and we must pray for for, for a member uh, in this new normal where things must not stop, life is not stopping but we must find a way to do what God has called us to do where two or three are gathered then God is there and even in June, we're supposed to have Holy Communion. Maybe we'll still have it. Uh, you know, I was looking on YouTube and you find some Christian Reformed churches in America. They have a way of doing it. Uh, it's either the pastor is e eating alone on behalf of the church, the Holy Communion, or um, together we have a life service and um, everyone buy their own grape juice because now the alcohol is still banned. Uh, you, you buy your own juice and bread and we eat together uh, it's, it's also a way of worshipping but we'll talk about it next week if there is Holy Communion even during June because on the calendar it was supposed to be there it was planned that we must have Holy Communion but uh, we'll talk about that the Holy Communion and even uh, the, the marriage of our brother and sister which is going ahead the blessing on 7 June but let us uh, then uh, sing the song Mato Angangalirare verse 1 to 4. Mato Angangalirare um, verse 1 to 4 as we prepare to receive God's blessing. accept God's blessing and you go and depart in peace remembering that God is with you God uh, blesses you, God protects you accept God's blessing <clears throat> May Jehovah the Lord God be with you and never forsake you May he make his face to shine towards you and give you peace and be gracious to you Beloved in Christ may the grace of our Lord Jesus and the love of God our Father and fellowship with the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Beloved, thank you and God bless and continue to trust in God and be with God and let's give all glory and honor to Him. Let us end uh, by finishing that song, Matuangangarirare, the last verses. Thank you and have a, a good day, Father, and God continue to, to, to be with you. <laughs>